morning, brothers and sisters. I'm so glad that you're able to join us this morning on this wonderful uh, broadcast from uh, the JBLM Garrison Chaplain's Office. My name is Chaplain Joshua Ade, and I'll be the one uh, preaching for this few moments that we're going to have together. And by the grace of God this morning, I want to talk to you about faith in tough times. Can we all repeat it together? Faith in tough times. And the scripture will be coming from the book of Mark, chapter 4. And I will commence my reading from verse 35 to 41. I will be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And hear what the Bible said. Verse 35, Mark chapter 4. It say, And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they have sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was not full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they fear exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let us pray. Father, I just want to thank you for this moment. You say your word will not return to you void, but will accomplish its purpose. Father, it might be a short time, but let this word accomplish a purpose in the life of your people, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way right now. For in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. And let the church say amen. Amen and amen. You know, like I told you right now, the topic of the message I'm about to preach is faith in tough times. Faith in tough times. You see, the children of Israel are very, very. Somehow they go through this, so they, 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 they need about crisis every time. When we talked about tough times, the children of Israel have gone through that. So for the disciples, this was a tough time in their own lives too. And I bet that most of you too must have gone through some tough times in your life. In this particular case, I'm, I want to share, I want us to look at something so profound. So for us to be able to get this message, there's something I want to do. I want to break it down to three parts. So the first part I want us to see this morning is the sudden storm. Can we, can we repeat it together? The sudden storm. The second thing is the sad sailors. Then finally, we'll be looking at the sleeping Savior. You see, when you look at this particular verse I just read from verse 35 to 41, you could see the sudden storm, and you could see the sad sailors, and finally, the sleeping Savior. As you look at this particular passage, something will begin to dawn upon you and me right now. You see, the Bible says something so profound. It says, on that same day, the question is, what is the Bible talking about here, saints? He said, that same day, not a different day. That means something must have happened that's supposed to be a lesson for, for these disciples, but they didn't get it. He said, on that same day, when Jesus had performed miracles, he had done great things. He had shown them that he is the Lord over everything. He has shown them that he has power over principalities, he has power over everything. With him, nothing is impossible. You know, it was just that the children of Israel, when they were crossing the Red Sea, God demonstrated his power. All the plague he brought on the Egyptians, they crossed those Red Sea easily. But when they get into the wilderness, guess what? They forget about everything the Lord has done. I guess that's what the Bible is trying to say here too. How many of how many times have me and you forgotten what the Lord has done for us? Whenever there's a little crisis, we forget about what God has done. 
You know, somebody told me some, something one day. He said, Josh, a faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. You see, you see, if you say you have faith and your faith cannot be tested, then you cannot trust that faith. You see, if you have never been sick, how will you know that God is a healer? If you don't have a problem, saints, how will you know that God can solve all your problems? If you don't have some lack, how can you know that God is a Jehovah Jireh? Is that what we're talking about today? What me and you go through help us to know who God is. That's what Jesus was trying to get his disciples to see, even me and you today. You see what happened here, church? It's a crisis. And somebody told me one time, he said when it comes to crisis, it's just a matter of when. It's not a matter of if. So right now, for some of us, it's either you are going into a crisis, or for some of you, you are in a crisis right now. And some of us, maybe you're just coming out of one now. But no matter where you are, as long as you're a human being, guess what? Crisis is part of life. You see, right now in America, in the whole world, we're having a crisis now. What is the crisis we're going through? COVID-19. The coronavirus. I want you to think a moment. Last year, December, who could have thought that the whole world would be going through this particular pandemic? But here we are in the moment of crisis. The question is, how do we respond to crisis when it comes into our lives? You see, it was sudden too, because look at what happened here. The Bible said that as at the time the, the, the disciples begin to move across the sea, everything looked calm, but suddenly the storm came. How often has something happened suddenly in our lives, church? Suddenly, no, from nowhere, stuff will just happen, and you begin to wonder, Lord, what's going on? You see, I walk in the hospital. In the hospital in which I walk, I walk, sometimes people will come down there and they will tell you they have a cancer. And the cancer is not just stage one, stage two, or stage three. Guess what? Stage four, terminal cancer. And now what they will tell them is, you have some few months to live. It's not a crisis in that family. There are some of us, maybe you are here right now, your spouse from nowhere just came with a divorce letter that they are quitting, they want, they, they, want, they want an end to the marriage. You see, that's a crisis. There are some of us, maybe right now, maybe one of your children decided to start doing things contrary to what you've taught them. You see, that's a crisis in your family right now. There are some people who have lost a job right now who are thinking about how am I going to feed my family. That's a crisis right now. How do we respond to crisis? The Bible said that when the crisis came, the good thing is here. The scripture said that when the disciples left, they took Jesus with them. Aren't you glad that they take Jesus with them? You see, that's the most important I want us to see today. They took Jesus with them. So if you want to take Jesus to wherever you're going, you've got to make room for him. The question today is, do you have enough room in your life for the Lord? Did you create room? Did you wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I, I, I'm holding on to you today. Do you wake up early in the day to seek the face of the Lord? So that every place you go, you go with Jesus. You see, that's one good thing they did. The Bible says when they left, they took Jesus with them. Church, if there's anything I want to tell you this morning, is wherever you go, make sure you go with Jesus. Make sure you go with Jesus. You see, if they, if they have not gone with Jesus and they had this particular sudden storm, what would they have done? They could have died. You see, the Bible says something so profound. He said that when Jesus rose up, which we'll get to, he rebuked that storm. That means that by rebuking that storm, that storm did not come from the Lord. So Satan was the one that caused that storm. You see, every day when me and you are going somewhere, the enemy is there. The Bible says he came to, 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 to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The enemy wants to destroy. The enemy wants to steal. The enemy wants to kill. But the Bible says that Jesus came that we might have life and have it in abundance. So when you look at this particular story, it's so profound. See what, what he said? He said that after some time, 
when the disciples figured out what to do, they couldn't do it. And that's why I came up on that particular one. I said, the sad sailors. I don't know why it took them so long, church, to call upon the Lord. Because finally, maybe they must have been thinking in their mind that he, is, he doesn't know when it comes to fishing. He doesn't know the way of the sea. Remember, these disciples, you have Peter. He's a professional fisherman. Andrew, his brother, a professional fisherman. James was also a, a, a fisherman. Likewise, John. They could have been thinking in their mind that we got this. We got this. We don't need Jesus. He's the son of a carpenter. If we, need, if we need to make some chairs and some table, we could have asked him about it. You see, sometimes some of us, we know too much that calling upon the Lord is a problem. You think you got everything together. You see, disciples, they were like that too. Until finally, they run out of their energy. They run out of their strength. That's when they know that they need to go to Jesus. I don't want you to be in the situation of these disciples. Run to him right now if you have some problems. You see, what they thought was a big deal for them, look at how Jesus solved it. Finally, when they woke him up, they said, care us not that we perish. They begin to accuse Jesus instead of them saying, Lord, please help us. He said, care us not that we perish. Church, look at the scripture here. Who is in that boat with them? Jesus. So if they are going down, guess who is going down too? Jesus is going down. But do you think that Jesus is going to allow that to happen? The Lord will never, never let you fall. So it doesn't matter what the crisis I'm going through today. It doesn't matter the crisis you are going through today. It doesn't matter the crisis America is going through today. What is most important, I want you to know, is we've got to call upon Jesus. You see, it doesn't matter what you're going through right now. I will tell you to call upon Jesus. Are you going through some financial difficulties? Call upon Jesus. Are you having some problem with your spouse? Call upon Jesus. Are you having problems with your children? Call upon Jesus. Are you having problems at work with your colleagues? Call upon Jesus. Are you having problems with your supervisors or with your boss at work? Call upon Jesus. Are you sick and disease in your body, in your mind? Call upon Jesus. Hear what the Bible said. He said, for he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. He is the Lord that healeth us. It doesn't matter what we're going through right now. Our world could be going through this, I mean, this COVID-19 virus. But it doesn't matter what we're going through right now, church. If we can only call upon him, he is here to answer us. I don't know the problems you have in your home right now, the crisis you're going through right now. But I dare you to call upon him and see what the Lord will do for you. Call upon Jesus. Everyone that call upon him, he has never let them down. He will not let you down. Let's bow down and pray this morning. Father, we just want to thank you for your word that will not return to you void. Lord, you say when we call upon you, you will answer us and show us great and mighty things. I pray that everyone that call upon you today, even our whole America, the whole world as we turn unto you, consign this coronavirus. Hear us from heaven, Lord. Answer us speedily, Lord. Bring an end to all the crises that we face individually and even as a nation. Holy Spirit, do for which no man can do, Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray. And let the church say amen. Amen. And God bless you. Till we see you next time. Have fun. And please stay safe. And make sure every place you go, wash your hand. God bless you.